All right, we are joined by Indiana head coach Mike Woodson along with Xavier Johnson and Trace Jackson Davis. Coach Woodson, if you can open with an opening statement and then we'll take questions for the students. Well, it was a hell of a game. That's, you know, I mean, I have nothing but respect for Juwan and his staff and that organization in terms of how they pushed us to play. And, you know, these two guys sitting next to me along with the guys in the locker room had a lot to do with this win, along with my staff. Um, it was a total team effort, and this team hadn't quit all year. We've been so competitive over the course of this season, and a lot of games that we've lost, we just we didn't get rewarded for it, you know. And I've I've, I've just I felt, you know, even at halftime, guys that. You know, we still had a shot to win the game, and these guys came out and they just played and played and played themselves back into the game and, and was able to pull it out. Questions for the students. We'll come in the front row here. We'll start with Jeff, and we'll work our way across. Jeff Rabjohn, Peaks.com. This is for uh, both of you guys. Um, Trace, first of all, what do you feel led to your big second half? And then Xavier, I'd like to get your thoughts seeing him do what he did in the second half. Um, the biggest thing for me is that um, in the locker room, uh, Coach Woody got on me. He told me that I wasn't playing up to my capabilities, but then he said at the same time, basketball is two halves. So um, I went out there. I think it started on the defensive end. I was up um, kind of getting in the passing lanes and ball lanes and then um, coming back. Um, and then on offense, having this guy right next to me coming off the screens, getting easy lobs, I think that got me going. We'll go to Zach in the front row here. I guess for either of you guys, we've asked you so often after those close losses what you needed to do to get over that hump to finish out a game like this. Are there moments you can kind of trace in, in this, sorry, trace the pun unintended, in, in this performance, it kind of, I guess, experiences you've drawn on in some of those losses to be able to say we're not going to let that happen this time? You go? Go ahead. I go, okay. Um, so basically, the, the game that I think about is um, Wisconsin, the first time we played them. and. Um, what they did to us and um, how you watch a team and you start coming back and that one team believes and the other team gets defeated. So um, we believed that we were going to win and we kind of saw them deflating and deflating and then we finally got back. So um, hopefully we can carry that energy because um, I feel like that we can beat anyone. But at the same time, just getting over that hump, especially to a team like Michigan who's beat us the last nine times, um, it's big. Front row, Tyler. Uh, Tyler Tashman with Inside the Hall. Uh, Trace, I understand this is kind of more of a philosophical question, but um, I think it was a couple of weeks ago you tweeted, embrace the struggle. Mm -hmm. What about being in the struggle is so difficult? Like, how, how do you try to get through that mentally? Um, and, and now kind of getting out of it a little bit, what makes it so rewarding? Um, so basically for me, um, just struggling, even this game, in the first half, not having to go my way, you can't you can't get too down on yourself. You got to keep playing. And then my guys were always picking me up. I think the fans were big. Even in the first half, they were still cheering for us, so that was huge for us. And then going into halftime, um, having my teammates believe in me um, is big for us, and that's really big for our team. It's believing, believing that we can win, and believe that we have opportunities to succeed. We'll go all the way on the left hand side. Yeah, Kevin Brockway, CNHI. For either player, you're at the uh, they're at 60 points with about 12 minutes to go. Um, and then you guys really clamped down. What changed defensively for you guys? Was it a matter of figuring some things out or what, what spurred on the defense from that stretch on to, uh, to start to run? Uh, I mean, I just feel like we locked in. Uh, with the last, last 12 minutes, Coach said we got to get a stop. It's all about getting stops. We're scoring. We just can't get stops. And everybody, everybody, looked at the, looked at the, everybody held each other accountable for that man. And, and we, just, we just dug in and got stops. We'll go away far right. Trace, uh, can you talk a little bit too about uh, all the contributions you guys got in the second half from Trey and Jordan, and uh, especially on the defensive end and, and, and turning defense into offense? Uh, most definitely. JG is just, um, he's an energy guy. He's someone that's going to come in and get rebounds. I saw him when I was going up to get some of them. He was a whole head above me. So um, he's huge for us. He blocks shots. And then he's just, he's a positive influence on the floor. And then Trey coming off ball screens hard, making the right plays. He struggled a little bit, but got to keep him his head up and just keep playing because he got to play through his mistakes. But I thought both their contributions really helped us and really got us the win, honestly. On the left-hand side. It's just 
following up on that, it was it was the two of them, the two of you out there, and it, it, was, it was that combination of, of five for the entire comeback. It's, what about that lineup that you had? It was Miller, I think, was the fifth. What about that lineup worked for you guys? Um, I just think that um, with that lineup, you had Trey coming off ball screens, X coming off ball screens, and we had space with shooters, and then JG can also stretch the floor, and then me. Um, being able to be a lob threat was big, but at the same time, it's not just going to always be those five. It's going to be a contributions of different guys every single night, and that's what coach is big on. It's got to always be next man up. We'll go to Mike in the middle. Mike Schumann with the Daily Hoosier. Guys, we've asked you so many times about closing games. You, you worked so hard to finally get that lead. I'm curious what the conversations were like when you had it there in the final minute or two. Uh, I mean, I feel like we learned from our mistakes in the past. Uh, I mean, we've been watching a lot of film, credits to the coaches, watching a lot of film, learning from it, and, and just work, working on it. And, and now, now we had the chance to go prove, it, prove, prove what we worked on. We have time for a few more for the students. We'll go to Dustin on the far left. Hey, Trace, I guess just to start, what, um, what did you see go wrong in the first couple minutes, I guess? What, what, what were they doing to hold you back, and what did you kind of have to get over uh, in that open, after that opening stretch? I just think that um, they came out with more intensity and energy, honestly. Um, they punched us in the mouth, and they just kept punching us in the mouth, honestly. And um, we carried that over. I think we had a little bit of life kind of going in to the end of the first half. And then at the start of the second half, it was kind of the same way. But then we really honed in on defense and got stops that we needed, and we were putting the ball in the basket. All right, on the left-hand side, we'll stay there. And then one more with Julian, and then we'll release the students. Haley Jordan, Sports Illustrated, for either player. One of the keys to beating Michigan is obviously stopping Hunter Dickinson. How are you able to do that, especially in the second half? Um, I think Hunter's a great player, and he had his way in Bloomington, and then he had his way in the first half, honestly. Um, he was hitting shots, but the big thing with him was pushing him off the lane, and then I thought our guards really helped him crowd, and they were pressing the ball so he couldn't get it. Last question for the students is from Julian BTN. Gentlemen, can you talk about, well, express to me what it means to advance in the play on Friday. I mean, express what Friday represents because you're seeing the light at the end of the tunnel almost and you can advance. So can you express to me what it means to advance in the play on Friday? Trace, you start and then Xavier. Um, for me, it's just um, it's the next game on our schedule. We play a really good Illinois team. Um, but I've never played on Friday, so this is a new experience for me. I hope I see a lot of fans in the stadium, and um, we're going to go out and compete. Xavier? Uh, to me, it's just another game as well. Uh, I mean, just ne next step to, to, to what our goal is as a team. We want to we wanna win this whole thing, and that's what we plan on doing. All right, you guys can head back to the locker room. We'll continue with questions for Coach Woodson. We'll start in the front row with Zach. Mike, uh, over here, sorry. Left-hand side. Uh, I know he didn't play much in the first half because of the fouls. It seemed like kind of from the moment he stepped on the floor in the second half, X was just intent both with his play and he kept kind of gesturing to the crowd, gesturing to his, his teammates, just, I guess, energy as much as anything else. And obviously that manifests itself somewhat in statistics. But just how important was he from an energy perspective at both ends of the floor in that second half? Well, X has been pretty good here. As of late, I mean, really playing solid for our ball club on both ends of the floor. And I thought again tonight he led us, but it was a combination of, you know, Geronimo and Galloway having him back and Rob. You know, we had places to go. And doing that stretch, I was searching, you know, as a coach, trying to find a combination that could change the game. And, and, the Geronimo and Galloway and X, and then I came back with Miller, along with Big Fella, changed the whole dynamics of that game. We'll go to the far right side. Hey, Coach, I asked Coach Terry here last week on the Big Ten Women's, what's it like for you to see these fans here, Hoosier Nation, traveling, and how exciting is that for you as they follow you through the tournament? Well, it's always been that way. I mean, as far as I can remember, but it's great to see them out, come out and and show, show their support. I mean, we need it, man. I mean, this is probably the biggest win for our program in such a long, long time. And, you know, I got to give my staff and the guys in that locker room that wear that uniform a lot of credit, man, because this team, they just won't quit. And that's, that's a good sign to me. We'll go on the far left side, Kevin. 
Uh, yeah, coach, just uh, the poise and execution down the stretch. You, you've unfortunately been on the wrong end of some close games lately. What what was different uh, today, particularly in the last three minutes, in terms of, of how you think you played? I just I thought that coming down the stretch, even when they made the run to cut it to two, I just, in the timeouts, I just saw steadiness. You know, like, you know, we've been here and we've struck out so many times that we just, we're not gonna let it happen tonight. And we came out of the timeout and we, we executed, we made plays that we needed to make to secure the win. We'll go all the way on the far right. Uh, Bob Kravitz with The Athletic. Mike, I know you're not a licensed bracketologist, but do you think this gets you in? I don't know. Uh, the only thing I can say, Bob, is that we, you know, if you look at our, our schedule and how we've competed this year, I would like to think that this game will put us over the top. Uh, but like I told the guys in the locker room, I, I don't know how it works. I'm new at this. But, you know, we, we got to get ready for Illinois and see if we can play like we did tonight the second half and see if we can get another win that might secure us for the for the big dance. So I don't know. I don't know how the selection committee works and but I just gotta tell our guys we're still playing and we still gotta play hard and, and try to win. We'll go on the left to Rick. Yeah hi Mike Rick Bozich from WDRB in Louisville. Trace mentioned you got on him at halftime. What in particular, were you upset about in the first half, and what did you say to him? Well, his play the first half wasn't, wasn't really good, I'll tell you that. And I kind of keep locker room things in, inside, but it wasn't pretty, I'll tell you that. And I thought he responded extremely well, and, and we needed that. I mean, I think Trace is a hell of a player, man. He's one of the best players in the Big Ten. And I didn't think he played that way the first half. Second half, he stepped it up and played like we thought he could play. We'll go on the right-hand side. Mike, Tom Bruce, Sports Illustrated, Indiana. Uh, this past dozen games or so, Trace has, you know, has struggled a lot of, in the second half of games. So how gratifying is it, especially with considering the significance of this game, for him to step up and lead you both with scoring, but also the four blocks? No, it's huge. I mean. This game was huge for this program, man. I mean, you know, we lose the day, and I don't know what the committee is, you know, going to do or say about Indiana University basketball. And our guys just step in, not just Trey. I mean, everybody that played tonight contributed in some way. And we're going to need that the rest of the way. I mean, Illinois is a good basketball team, and they kind of had their way in Bloomington as well. So. We got to go back, break this tape down tonight, and, and learn from our, our mistakes in this game and get ready for Illinois. We have time for two more. Jim in the front row here. Jim Coyle with Indiana Sports Beat Coach. We talked about the, the tale of two halves with Hunter having the great first half and Michigan and in the second half, Trace coming alive. But uh, Xavier Johnson was the same in both. He was consistent, and his play has been that way here of late for the last four or five or six games. Uh, seven or eight rebounds, seven assists. How important has his uh, being able to stay so middle of the road and stay in the keep everything calm been the difference for you guys? Well, I like to think he's grown as a player from the time we started to where he is today. He's put a lot of work, you know, on on the court and off the court in terms of watching film and just learning. You know, I, I'm not the easiest to deal with, and him being the point guard is probably the toughest position for me as a coach. So um, I think he's grown, man. I mean, I think the game is starting to slow down for him, and he's seeing things. He's always been pretty – pretty good defensively. He gives you a lot of effort there. But point guards, there's a lot that comes in being a point guard, man. And it's just not me on him. His teammates are on him. I mean, it's that's just the nature of being a point guard. But I think he's grown so much since we've started this journey. All right, we'll finish on the middle, second row. Coach, it feel, Gracie Barr with Inside the Hall. Coach, it feels Hi, like 
we've been talking about getting the team over the hump the entire end of the regular season. How did you do that today? What was the difference? And on such a big stage, how did you do that? Well, I couldn't be more proud of a group of guys, boy, because we, we've been striking out. You know, when you think about all the close games that we've had this season, um, this is really gratifying, you know, in terms of getting over the hump and on a major stage, a big game that we had to win. But, hey, I didn't play. Those guys in the locker room played, and they, they made it happen. So that's what it's all about at the end of the day. All right. Thank you, Coach. Right, we'll see you tomorrow. You.